the whole relation, function, domain, range discussion, I think when I first kind of learned it, it was confusing. And I remember they tried to explain to me, oh, you know, not all relations are functions, and you know, are functions, you're ready, whatever. Right? And it was very confusing. I think um, maybe starting with, like, the real world would be a good point. A lot of cool, like, nerdy adults will say something like, you know, son, your grades are a function of how hard you work, right? Or, you know, they'd be like, you know, your income is a function of how many hours you put in. So this whole, like, function of means that it's directly related to. So, for example, uh, and, there's, and there's, in your math book, there's two ways to do it, using points or using graphs. But in real life, like, here would be, here would be a perfect example. Let's say your paycheck, P, was $10 an hour, right? Obviously, when I change my hours, it directly affects my paycheck. Of course, like that's just common sense. So you could say that my pay is a function of my hours worked. And notice that every time I put in a different H, I get a different P. If I put in 2 here, let's do this in our head. If I put in 2 for H, 10 times 2 is 20, right? 2 here would give me 20 here. If I put in 3 for H, 3 times 10 would give me 30. So you'll notice that every input, okay, that was a math term, raise the alarm. Every input value gives me a different output value. This would not make sense. So, th so this is a function. This P equals 10H, that relation is also a function because every time I put in a different H, I get a different P. Uh, here's the, here would be a case when it wouldn't make sense, it wouldn't be a function. What if all of a sudden I worked four hours and now I got 40, right? Four times 10 is 40. And then I work five hours and all of a sudden my boss gave me 30 bucks. I'd be like, wait, what? 2 is 20, 3 is 30, 4 is 40, and 5 is also 30. So if I work 3 hours and 5 hours, it gives me the same output. Two different inputs gives me, that does not make sense. I would like call an attorney, you know, for like my little paycheck. So, so that's what this is all about. Now, when you look at it like just flat out for a quiz and you don't even want to understand it and you just want to ace the quiz, this would be an example like 2, 10, you know, 3, 9, 4, 50, whatever, and they said, is this a function? And the answer is, well, 9 is kind of ridiculous, so let me make this at least like somewhat plausible. And the answer is, if you really wanted to be like cool about this, you could just glance at it, right, and say, well, Ryan told me that every input value has to have a different output. There's not even a repeat of the input values. There's no repeat of x in this case, x, y, x, y, x, y. And since x does not repeat, this is a little rule, I'm giving you a little rule. Since x does not repeat and give you a different one than this is, yes, is a function. Now let me just add another point and mess this whole game up. What if the next thing I put was 2 and 12, right? Now x did repeat. And they gave me different y's. And I heard that if one input gives you two different outputs, that is not a function. So if they ask you using points, all you do is look at the x's and say, did x repeat? Did x repeat? Oh, x did repeat. And y's are different. No, not a function. If x's do not repeat, then you're in the safety zone and it is a function. Now, graphically, it's the same thing, but like it just looks different. If you had a graph like this, right, and they were saying, OK, is this a function? There's a little thing called the vertical line test, but really, if you just actually think, this x gives this y, this x this gives this y, there's no repeating of one x giving two y's. This x gives this y, this x gives this y. The vertical, that's the smart way to think about it. The vertical line test says, if you draw vertical lines and it never crosses the graph twice, you're cool and it is a function. Let me draw one where that's not true. Okay, you're like, mm, look at this one. Is this a function? That's your question on the test. Is that graph a function? You're like, mm. so there's a nerdy guy with a colored shirt, and he said, if I drew a vertical line and it crosses my graph twice, then it is not a function. This clearly crosses this graph twice, so no, not a function. And just for the record, that's because this x gave me two y's. That doesn't make sense. So. That's the whole speech about, you know, this whole relation versus function. Now, I've been talking about input-output. I'm going to give you some slang. The words domain and range just mean input and output. 
So every time you have a point like 2, 5, domain is all the x values and range is all the y values, right? So you can be like, what is the domain of this function or relation? The domain, flat out easy, would be 2, 3, and 4. The range for this sucker would be 5, 6, and 7. All right? It's that easy, I promise. Domain is the x values or the input values, and range is the output values or the y values. And same thing on a graph. So if they said, here's a point, 3, 6, and they said, what's the domain and range? Domain is 3. You're too slick to fall for that. And range is 6. And that's it. That's the whole you know, confusing relation versus function issue. Um, so I think you have it dialed now. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your local high school passing this class, take it online at Silicon Valley High School. And if you pass it there, the credits will be transferred back to your school.